Hey, hey, all you Arizona lovers, this is the Finding Arizona podcast, episode number 409. I'm your host, Jose. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Today's episode is with Matt of Culture to Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, as a seasoned business coach and entrepreneur with a passion to create impactful cultures within companies, Matt is an expert at what he does. I want to say thank you to Matt for coming aboard and sharing his story. It was a lot of fun to talk to Matt. Matt is a very interesting person to talk to and especially what he does for a living. It's interesting to understand the culture aspect of gaining from what you believe in. And so I just want to say thank you. I hope you enjoy this episode. And oh, as always, stay connected with everyone in our conversations with the links in the bios below. Just to go into the little bit of the business side, as always, you can hear every episode of our podcast at FindingArizonaPodcast.com. All of our social media handles are at Finding Arizona Podcast. And if you want to send us an email, FindingArizonaPodcast at gmail.com. Thank you so much to everyone who's been listening and watching. And behind the scenes, we're going to get into it because this is the main part of the intro that I want to share. And uh, I'm very excited to say we are in this uh, season's uh, 2004 or 2024 wow my head is out there uh best of our valley with arizona foothills we are under the best podcast category and i just want to shout out not only ourselves but a a very large group of individuals who have made it to their own best of categories and they are previous guests who have been on the show and i really want to share and highlight them because we wouldn't be where we at we were at without them and without them coming on the show so if you want to fast forward a little bit that's fine i understand you can go get your own copy of the arizona foothills and look them up but i want to shout them out because they mean so much to me because they've been so nice to us and we have connected with them so let's just get started. The best of dog training. Our dear friends over at Paddock Paul's Pet Care and Training. It was a wonderful episode to talk to. I, I, and it was like really great to understand how he chose to go about what the training is under the pathology, like understanding the animal first and really wanting people to understand that you can train any and uh, any pet uh, and you can really get a, a, a real big dose of understanding yourself through the pet. So I hope you guys go check that out. Uh, Jenna, Jenica, who is now, she's got two categories, but we're just going to highlight one. Best photographer for fashion and beauty. A, a at May's photography was so great. We actually got a chance to not only talk with her, but she actually shot some photos of Britt and I and it was really beautiful because at the time we were living downtown like literally uh off of Van Buren and like 7th and it was really great that it was like she got to really understand us as a couple but also understand you know that she understood where to shoot the right you know shots and where in the valley we were located it was like perfect for certain places to go sit on stairs and be in the in the area of like you know very i don't know how to put it a very city lifestyle shoot and it was great to to sit and chat with her our dear friends over at bird call the best pet friendly restaurant i have to say it's not only the best pet friendly restaurant but if you've been to their new location over in i think chandler gilbert it is a wonderful place for you to take the kids if you like mini golf and they have a little putting area. I encourage you guys to go check out Bird Call. Wonderful restaurant, easy experience to get through. You just order right at the right at the uh, counter there, and it's pretty like seamless. You just put in your credit card and you order what you want, and you just go and you can sit down, and then you can get a, either a text message or a call uh, to go pick up your order at the counter again. And it's just really super simple super easy friendly uh, user experience next up our dear friends uh, at Mackenzie Collier interiors the interior design best of interior design designers and firm I have to say not only is Mackenzie a wonderful designer but she's a fantastic mom we've experienced her and just being close to her as a friend and uh, just a little you know behind the scenes we've seen her on multiple occasions with her young ones uh, so I have to say this is really great that we get a chance to do stuff like this with special families that we encounter and what they do outside of for business and so for us, for Britt and I, it's really great that we get a chance to know them on that personal scale. 
best kids restaurant. This is kind of funny. We just did this episode not too long ago, Pita Jungle, and just knowing the history that Pita Jungle brings, the fact that they have a kids best kids restaurant and under this format, it's really cool. They're fantastic for you as a family to go check out health healthy choices and options for the young ones, even for yourself if you want to get in there and enjoy. Uh, my favorite is the flatbreads. I love the the kind of like pizza s style of them and just really great and fantastic fresh food for all so we're going to move on to the best pr robin patterson of mac media relations i have to say without them we wouldn't be able to have done some of the great fantastic events that we've been a part of they've included us a lot of uh, pr firms include us in their in their journey of what they want to highlight for their clients so send them our way we're happy to be involved in those events and share those stories and not only that it's just because the relationship that we have with a lot of these firms is just one of we want to be cheerleaders we want to share those stories and they understand that so i hope that you guys will also understand what we're trying to do here is really just be uh, a voice for those who need a voice and so that being said we're going to move on to the next one the best gift shop uh, francis it is so great that they made it to the best of category because it is a fantastic shop if you haven't been over there in midtown over on camelback go check it out it is a highlight because there are multiple shops along that row that you can go shop at not only just at the francis but it is fantastic for gifting uh those who like the local vibe and just go in there any time of the i I believe they have hours but you have to make sure you check those but i encourage you guys if you want something local from a gift shop go check it out go go shop there all the time best pop-up shop and this is pop-up shop market and this is no like it just makes sense that they're here in this best of category junk in the drunk junk in the trunk vintage market thank you to coley and Lindsay for allowing us to share your story from a very early on perspective on i think it was like probably i want to say like either third or second or fourth somewhere around there like early ons of doing it on a big scale over at Westworld. It was fantastic to understand their story and their journey and how they started this all out from a small backyard or like a small neighborhood market and then it grows into this big massive thing and understanding what they have to do to provide for the clientele who want to shop there so i understand who they are as individuals and it makes it for me a fantastic story to share them and see how they have grown and progressed throughout the year so kudos to them over at uh, junk in the trunk uh best of social media marketing and it is fantastic that they've been highlighted e squared marketing which is a predominantly female owned and female run and i hope that you guys check out their episode it was fantastic to get to know them a little bit better i hope that you guys are encouraged to if you are a business owner go check them out because they could help you a lot and they just really want to do the best work for their clients as well so hopefully you'll be able to do something with them as far as work wise and it's great that they have been highlighted because they, they have a lot of moms that are working their butts off behind the scenes over there and i really do encourage anyone who's wanting to work with them to go do so best motivational instagram that is homemade social and for those of you who don't know the owner behind that is actually b books and i love that she's got her crew uh now highlighted not only just her but her fantastic team that she's been working with for the last couple of years and homemade social is actually really great for those of you who are wanting to learn more about social media marketing and hopefully understanding what it means to put yourself and your brand out there fantastic uh instagram themselves i hope that you guys are encouraged to go check them out that is uh at homemade social and then last but not least best of the valley adventure experience hot air expedition the sisters behind this business is fantastic it was a wonderful story to get to know them get to know what their family history was about and how this all came to be and what they do now to make sure that their customers are excited to go out into the hot air balloon and what kind of events they put on just to like encourage people to come check them out uh, check them out taking off and stuff like that so i hope you guys really understand that what we're doing here is to highlight and share the best of the valley and this goes to prove it and we hope that we get more fantastic stories like these ones and these are just the hand 
handful that are just being highlighted through this episode or this issue of 20, 2024 Arizona Foothills Best of Our Valley issue. So go check it out. I hope you guys are encouraged to go seek on the episodes that we've done with these individuals. And last but not least, we'll just jump right into this episode, episode number 409, Culture to Cash. Matt, thank you again and thank you all for listening. We will catch you on the next one. Score big with SeatGeek. Whether it's concerts, sports, or live events, SeatGeek has you covered. Use code FIGHTINGARIZONA to get a fantastic $20 discount on your SeatGeek tickets. Catch your favorite live events hassle-free with extra savings. Visit SeatGeek.com and make every experience unforgettable. Welcome back, everybody, to the Finding Arizona podcast. I'm your host, Jose. As always, we have fantastic guests every week, and today's no different. I'd love to introduce Matt here. And since 2019, I want to say, I've uh, been a business coach. I've mm-hmm. also been uh, a, an owner, and it is, uh, let me get this, culture to cash? Yep. All right. Awesome. I was just I was like, I wasn't sure if it was for cash or to cash. It was, I was like going back and forth. But again, business coach, um, a lot of cool things that you get involved with and a lot of processes that we're going to be talking about today. So um, give us a little bit of your origin story and how this came to be just so, so that our audience gets to know you, yourself a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, I started in business in 2006, uh, my first company, and in doing that, um, I learned a lot. And so um, we were part of a a distribution for Xerox at the time. Mm -hmm. We had multiple territories. Um, Things were good until they weren't, you know, going into the downturn. So it was not a great time to buy in, but um, learned a ton about uh, structure of business, inventory management, um, distribution, and um, and sales. That was a big piece of it. Yeah, and it was tough, tough sales cycles. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was really the the beginning. And um, in that time period, you know, learning how to to manage and execute on um, a strategy for something that we had never been you know apprised to, which is okay now. Revenue is declining. Mm-hmm. Um, we're having more in demand uh, of our time and energy and making less money. Our revenue got cut probably in half. Um, so it was a tough time for us. Yeah. Uh, but inside of that, it was um, a knowing of learning how to be resourceful mm-hmm. and, um, and really taking good care of people. And then um, beyond that, I started a printing company in 2009-10. Yeah. And ran that until 2016. And so during that time period, the big piece for me that came out was uh, really understanding people. And that was that's the piece that we focus on even today and, and that's our main cornerstone. So the ability to focus on people in a way that's meaningful, that drives uh, purpose, innovation, creativity, yeah. right people, right seats, right things. And in that, um, in building the print company, that was the thing that I really was excited about. Nice. So. Um, in 2014, things started to really ramp up mm-hmm. and uh, it was going well. In 15, I decided that I was going to um, take a break from the company. So I went on a, basically went up to uh, Flagstaff at the time mm-hmm. and left my team to really navigate and work the business yeah. on that on their own. And in that time period, was nerve wracking, like waiting to see how things were going to go. Yeah. So I got phone calls and emails, and then it was less and less and less. Um, but we had built a, a company where they were very capable people. Mm-hmm. And so what should have been our worst month ever in July was our best month we've ever had. Wow. And um, coming back to that, I was out of a job. Wow. So I didn't have anything to do really because the team was executing and doing all the things yeah. that we had planned to do. Uh, so at that moment, I realized I wasn't I wasn't just passionate about the business anymore. So I decided to sell and prep the business over that year in order to um, get it to a place where it was time to exit. And I had a, a vendor of ours that uh, that bought us. Wow! And so I've held on to this idea of culture because the day that they came and picked up uh, all our furniture and everything <laughs> out of the building, I was left there alone. And in there being alone, it was like, oh, I didn't miss the, the income, I didn't miss mm-hmm. anything but really the people. Wow. 
And so now that's one of the main things that we focus on is really helping companies build quality cultures. Mm -hmm. And if they choose to exit, great. If not, then they've got a successful business uh, that's autonomous, they're yeah. making great money, um, but it, it's in the, the idea that everybody rises. Yeah, uh, that's, I mean, incredible story. I mean, the fact that you've, you created something that basically once you were at a certain point and you had to walk away, uh, it, it, it flourished and almost to the point of like this kind of gardener, you know, uh, taking care of the seed and allowing it to do almost what it needed to do on its own. You just had to just help out in the beginning aspects of it and, and just let it grow into something that it already knew how to grow into. Yeah. And so uh, kudos to you, first off, to be able to, one, understand the moment that you could walk away and just like let it kind of understand itself and, and really appreciate it from afar. Mm -hmm. and taking it all in at that moment where the furniture was being uh, picked up and everything like that. I'd love to ask you a couple of questions related to this story. Was there anything in particular that made you have to walk away? Was it like something family related or was that just something internally you struggled with or something that you had to help yourself comprehend in that moment? Uh, really, it was a decision that I noticed that I wasn't living my purpose. Okay. Like what I was doing was, was great in the sense that it was providing for our family, mm -hmm. but it wasn't something that was fulfilling me on a purpose level. Got it. it wasn't some aspects of actually, you know, helping to um, develop people mm -hmm. and them to rise into their, their best selves. Yeah. But outside of that, I knew that there was something more that I should be doing. So I got it. That was the decision really. Um, and then beyond that, uh, I think the piece that most people don't understand if they've never sold a business before is the aftermath. Yeah. So yes, you might get a payday, um, and you get some free time, but that's, if you don't know what you're doing with that free time afterwards can be really tough. Yeah. Um, so having a plan, not only when you sell the company, but what are you going to do afterwards? Mm -hmm. So a lot of entrepreneurs, they just go and sell their company and they start another one immediately because yeah. they can't stand the space. Yeah. And um, they're used to being very busy, um, being needed, <laughs> and that's part of their value set. Yeah. And so if they're in a place where they're not uh, having that fulfilled anymore, well, now they start to feel empty. So they yeah. want to fill that very quickly. Um, so that's a really tough piece. And I went through that same period for you know at least a year and a half wow. of trying things and it not working out, uh, not being excited about it. And so I'd shelf it. Mm -hmm. And then it, it took a couple of years before I found something I was very excited about again. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you seem like a very internalized person where you can speak to your mindset and just how to, how you kind of, you know, kind of an introverted thing where it's like, I feel like with the introverts, they, they have this kind of mentality of being able to communicate their emotions and internalize and kind of, uh, meditate on them and just be able to execute on that on those things is that something that you a find truthful or b has that something that's always been a part of you as far as childhood going into being an adult i would say so we look at this from personality profiling yeah. and that's one of the tools that we use amongst many but inside that if we're looking at disc profile, which is a standard, a standardized uh, personality set, mm -hmm. then I'm a very high D, which is dominance. Mm -hmm. And then the other high one for me is the C is the compliance or analysis. Okay. Uh, I wish I had all these tools and understanding early on, you know, when I was a kid and then yeah. given that to my parents, I think it would have helped. Um, <laughs> but with that, that's where you might see that the high C's, those compliance folks that are analytical, you might find them as accountants, financial advisors, mm -hmm. or things like that. They're very good with data. Um, those folks typically can be more introverted or reserved. Mm -hmm. They're calculated, very thoughtful, they're processing, they're, they're fact driven, they're analysis driven. So they're always working through problems or they're questioning things. Yeah. And that's, I'd say that's a lot of what I did as a kid. Okay. And so um, for those folks that are having that, that personality, that is part of it. It's just this constant, mm -hmm. you know, busy mind. 
Yeah. And it's always working. And if it's working on the wrong things, it can be at a detriment, which causes that kind of anxiety For and, sure. uh, and loops that we don't like, the negative feedback loops. Yeah. Um, and so the opposite of that is part of the processing of it. And so in 2017, that's when I started getting into work about um, looking at how to and get through my thoughts mm -hmm. and then move through the feelings and beliefs and stories that I had and narratives that I was holding mm -hmm. so that I could turn those into positives wow. and just understand myself in a way and figure out how do I, how do I move this forward um, to create something you know significant? Yeah. Um, from the get go of your kind of pushing the business coaching aspect of what you did as the first client, let's say, yeah. was there confidence being that you have some uh, aspect of being able to say, look, I have been able to sell my business. Was there confidence in your abilities in the first kind of first couple of clients? And then how has it been since the kind of first inkling of turning this into a business and doing working with these clients. Yeah, the the first ones are are tough. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of the the head trash that goes on of like, ah, oh, how am I doing this uh, right now? I don't know what I'm doing. There's plenty of that imposter syndrome, and whether it's in coaching or any kind of business that somebody starts and they don't have a skill set yet developed, yeah. that, that, that shows up all the time. So it's a normal thing. And that imposter syndrome was certainly there for me, you know, from the beginning where I was like, oh, am I screwing this up? What if I miss something? Um, am I doing a good job? You know, are they getting the value? That's constantly there chirping away. Mm -hmm. And over time, once you get a framework put into place and you have your systems and your processes and your tools mm -hmm. and you understand the outcome, and I think that's the big piece, what is the outcome that we're after? Yeah. Then we just start gearing for that outcome. Yeah. And so, yeah, in the beginning it is challenging and uh, you wanna make sure that you're doing a good job and uh, we call it scope creep, which is essentially we're, we're over delivering because we want to make sure that they're satisfied and there's high value. Yeah. But at the same time, we also um, want to be cognizant of making sure that there's an, there's an even exchange. Scope creep. Can you kind of mm -hmm. expand a little bit on like where the naming comes from and what, what, I mean, just kind of expand a little bit more. Cause it's interesting. The fact that it's like, yeah, there is this level of like over delivering and, and items like that. I would love to understand a little bit more. Yeah, this uh, it was somebody that was in my uh, Visage group, which is a, a business organization. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if you guys haven't heard of it, um, but it was somebody in there, Zach, who mentioned it. He said, I, I think this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was the first time I heard the phrasing, but I, I knew exactly what it was referring to. Okay. And um, it really is this place. And, and some of this shows up from an emotional standpoint of, uh, you know, not good enough or I'm not doing enough or it's never enough. And okay. whether that's from childhood or just a natural um, personality framework that we're using, some mm -hmm. of the stories we're telling ourselves, uh, it can sit there. And until we, we kind of process it and look at it, and it's like a, a cube. So we're just looking at all sides and being yeah. objective and, um, and really understanding how is it impacting me and what can I do about it? Yeah. Yeah. I kind of feel like that's something that I'm in the mix of right now. And just, um, you know, I, as far as this podcast goes, I've always kind of looked at it as a uh, kind of a side project, but also something that I invested my, my efforts in as much as I can, because I find it very fascinating and interesting. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until my lovely wife had um, brought to my attention of just like how much good we're getting out of it and from it um, that we've started to put a lot more energy into, you know, how do we make this a real thriving business and um, going about it a very structured way. And without her, I, I can admit like she is the yin to my yang. I am just uh, very much the creative of like high uh, hopes and, and dreams and wanting to do this to affect and help others in this way. And she's like, okay, get it? Let's 
step it back so that we can take it step by step so that we can do that and also be parents and then and, and do all these other things that we need to make sure that we're covering our bases and um so yeah I just you know looking at it from that scope of like the far distance bigger picture is definitely something that I'm the the one behind um but yeah I just I find that very fascinating and, and I want to talk to you more about I guess your education, um, you seem like a well-read individual because I have seen your pie, or your uh, your reels from your Instagram oh, yeah. and just going into what kind of things you read and, and kind of going over some really interesting tactics, st- uh, strategies, and things like that. As you can see behind you, we have a cornucopia of books. Mm-hmm. Um, one I might point to you is the... And uh, color-coded. Yes, and color-coded. <laughs> turning her again um the tools of titans by tim ferris and what kind of books helped you in this process of you know building clients and things like that that you would say to someone if you were you know want to be a better leader or if you want to be a culture individual what kind of books Mm -hmm. would you suggest to read and then also what kind of books are you reading right now uh, I am reading How to Buy, ba- uh, Buy Back Your Time, Dan Martell okay. uh, is one. Um, I like the series from Ryan Holiday, you know, all the stoic stuff, but his newer ones that are out, those are, that's at my bedside. Okay. And awesome. then, um, uh, let's see, for, for books, my philosophy on books is read what's relevant. Okay. And in the sense of if we have... A, an issue, and it could be in sales, marketing, it could be people, finance, um, strategy, execution. So there's all these different things, and it even is, you know, raising raising kids or how to have a better marriage. Yeah. Well, these things show up in life, and um, oftentimes there's this like badge of honor of reading all these books. Yeah. Well, my question is, did it get implemented? You know, Good, yeah. if we read it, what is actually being put into action? And so I try and read things that are very fitting of what I'm attempting to learn mm-hmm. or want to uh, not master, but really get more proficient at. Okay. And, and so that's how I identify books that I want to read. So right now I'm reading How to Buy Back Your Time. There's good frameworks in there. Yeah. And it will help me as we, we grow. We're at a place now where we have uh, many active clients and, and now our, our time is very precious. So yeah. uh, we want to deliver the same value or more and at the same time i also want to make sure that i'm home for dinner and that i'm there in the morning with my kids and then i have date nights with my wife and all the other things and making sure i get to the gym so um, i start by stepping back and looking at um, the bigger picture Mm -hmm. and so we have what's called a visionary blueprint that we put together for ourselves as well as our clients Mm -hmm. so i look at that first and that's my 10-year picture my purpose uh, my core values, my decision-making filter of how I want to show up, yeah. uh, my do's and don'ts. And then that's drilled all the way down to a 90-day plan. And wow. then I do that 90-day plan you know, every quarter. But what are the outcomes that I'm building for the year? And so then I can start to look at what, mm-hmm. what um, media or books or things like that that I want to take in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it sounds to me like you have a really good way of going about it. And I would love now, to me, a lot of the times, too, where it comes into play, it's like, I would love to understand your partner a little bit, like what she thought about, you know, A, you selling the business and B, um, moving, you know, or does she like the 90 day process with you? Does she tag along mm-hmm. and, you know, maybe at those um, date nights, one of the things I've learned is if you're too individuals who either have the really same mindset or also a very opposite mindset it helps to have these communication dates where you're just like okay what do we want out of our relationship how do we build towards what we're trying to achieve and things like that and Mm -hmm. i was just kind of curious when you were talking about it's like you know i have the yin to my yang i would love to understand your partner a little bit and like how that how, how it works for you guys yeah, we've been together since 2002, late 2002. Um, so it's it seemed like just yesterday. It's gone by really fast, yeah. but we are very opposite. Okay. I'm very competitive. 
And she's very nurturing, compassionate, caring, empathetic. Yeah. But I think the piece that we align on is really the analytical side. So we we value those things and we like to look at things in a way that, um, for instance, like health for us is a, mm. is a big hobby interest. Okay. And for not only for ourselves, but um, how I coach clients and also for our kids. So yeah. um, she's been unbelievably supportive. And, um, and so... It, it's frustrating when you have somebody that's an opposite, mm-hmm. but it's also once you understand how to work together and that all she's doing is exposing blind spots for me. Yeah. And I have to drop my ego and say, okay, well, I want to be curious about that. Yeah. Tell me more about what you're seeing. And so check-in process is really huge. Yeah. yeah. I feel the same way where it's like, she's very much like the check-in pro- she fills those blind spots and helps me understand it. And not all, I'm not great at the checking myself and, and letting go of the ego part as of yet, but I'm still trying. I make the effort sometimes more and more, uh, realizing that, yeah, it's, it's, it's helpful for me to do those types of things. I, I, I want to try more because it, it means so much in our relationship and now with our son involved that as well with our family Mm -hmm. dynamic um so thank you i I really do appreciate you sharing that part Uh, i'll add though so when you asked about frameworks of how we operate yeah i was going to go into that yeah yeah, so the every year we do um we do family planning Mm -hmm. so we'll we'll break away for a day or two and we'll go in and start planning out the next year um sweet it seems wild that we have to plan a year in advance for some things but our summer vacations um Mm -hmm. family trips or spring um, break (laughs) all the things yeah so there's there's these pieces that we have to drop in so Mm -hmm. uh, we very much want to make sure that those stay intact okay so planning six eight months in advance allows to make sure that those things happen. Absolutely. And so we go through that, we check in with our core values, we kind of look at our family principles, Mm -hmm. uh, virtues, we look at what's working in the previous year, what's not working. Um, So we have a whole process that we go through, and then we we come back and check in with that. And we have a a giant calendar for the year that's dry erase, and we write and block all the things where I may be gone on a trip or um, you know, whatever it is that we have going on. Yeah. And so we block all these things out. It just gives us context of how quickly time passes. I mean, here we are in, mm-hmm. you know, in May and uh, we're almost halfway through the year. Yeah. And it was, felt like it was Christmas just uh, last oh, month. Yeah. So oh, trust me, I feel exact. And it only dawns on me even more and more as because my son's still like young. He, he literally like there was like a two week process of like him growing an inch Mm -hmm. and i'm just like you get so big like so quickly and he's just growing at a exponential rate and we were talking about this the other day where it's like yeah that time just it it feels like it just flew by in that sense of like we were celebrating his third birthday and now we're like talking about like swim safety and and you know making sure he's ready for the summertime and being around a pool like what we have in our backyard um I was also going to ask you about like these processes and some of the things that you go in with your clients, because I did look at your website and there is a way that you structure this. And can you give us the kind of blueprint of how you want to go from culture and um, the strategies that you kind of implement? And one of them in particular, I was going to ask why you, if you just laid it out for people to listen to, but there was one that I was like, why is this in front of this? And I'll go into it. But if you could give us those layouts. Yeah. Um, we have seven strata that we look at essentially though, for us, um, we build systems first mm-hmm. and people manage systems and we lead people. Okay. So we don't try and uh, manage people. And so that's, that's one of the, one of the pillar pieces there. And in doing that, our focus is around understanding what's not working in the company. Mm -hmm. But first, before we do any of this, we have to understand from the business owner standpoint, what do they want? Mm -hmm. And so to retire and exit a company, there's a number that they're likely want to hit. And once we understand that number, we can go into the company, we can figure out what the value of that company is. And then we figure out how to bridge the gap. How do we build a company that is going to meet that number uh, for their needs. Yeah. 
And then what needs to happen along the way? What are the milestones? Okay. So from a high level, that's what we work on. And then we get to work inside the company and reanalyze the people. Mm -hmm. We look at the systems that they have, the processes. We look at their financial information to figure out, hey, is this working or not working for the company? Um, are we going to need cash? Are we going to need you know some lines of credit? Um, we understand what buyers are out there for that type of business. Mm -hmm. Are they pri okay. private equity? Are we looking at an investment bank? Are we going to you know, um, an SBA type loan? Um, is it a, a competitor buying them out? There's all these things that we need to consider. Yeah. And so that's from a high level what we look at. But then we start putting in our software and some of the really you know tight closed loop systems that help manage the company. Yeah. yeah. Man, it's just, it seems like you're you're downloading a lot of the the internals and I ever and this is kind of the thing I like to ask about people who do this type of work is is there I mean there's there's you seem like a level-headed guy and the, I was like do you get stress from downloading all of their data and you know you have people people are never easy they're very messy or like they're a lot of them have like you know issues and things like that but it's like also, you're downloading the overall culture of like the business ethics of like how people work their way through getting to the top of top tier. Yeah. Do those things stress you out or do you sit your set yourself far enough apart where it doesn't kind of affect you? Yeah, that's a good question. I would say, um, yes, sometimes it does. And what what we do i really look for making sure that i'm also working to solve their problems mm -hmm. and so we want them to learn how to solve their own problems but there's bigger pieces at play so that's why we're there mm -hmm. and part of what um, people invest in is our our strategy our backgrounds our connections our way of looking at things our perspective being the outside source um, and all that is uh, at times there to really just start to solve the major issues. And sometimes there is some, some tough conversations that yeah. need to be had, whether it's with uh, the business owner specifically about how they're showing up or what they're doing or what's happening inside, how they're managing the company, mm -hmm. or it's particular people on the team that maybe not a fit. Yeah. And so then we got to have that tough conversation. So yeah. at times that can be stressful. Opposite of that is we know where it's going. Yeah. So we know what changes need to happen in order for the culture to rise, the people to rise, mm -hmm. the owner to find um, a way to get to where they need to go as well. So yeah. we, we're fully invested in making sure that the families are taken care of, of the employees that are there as well, mm -hmm. as well as the clients and the vendors and everybody. Nice. So if we're, if we're doing it right and they're doing it right, then everybody wins. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, you remind me a lot of uh, the show that I used to watch and my wife used to watch as well. It's called The Prophet. Yeah. And and that Marcus. was yeah, Mark. Mm -hmm. And that was really one of those shows where it's like, man, I, you know, where do you find these guys? Like, where do you find these kind of individuals? And you seem like the kind of guy that would go in there and, and start doing those types of things. So, um, I'm very like you know, interested in getting in the weeds with you and just kind of like what your kind of week looks like. I know mm -hmm. it can be very different, but what are those like things that you like to keep in your schedule? Like maybe it's like you were saying you were a big um, health and fitness and, and kind of keeping that. And then your, your day, your mornings with your kids and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Can you give us a little bit more and expand on that? Yeah. My goal is to be home in the mornings mm -hmm. and the evenings and uh, be there as the kids getting ready, kids are getting ready for school yeah. and then be home there for dinner. Now that's not the case, you know, every night. Yeah. Um, there's some nights where I'm traveling for work and, uh, but we're, we stay pretty close and that's, that's important great. for us. Um, but exercise is also extremely important. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, it, the, I don't want to call it biohacking, but the focus <laughs> yeah. on health and wellness for us has really become um, quite the the hobby. Mm -hmm. And for us, between our supplementation and uh, the, the exercise routines yeah. and, um, you know, sleep and hydration and just all nutrition, all these things where um, 
we focus on making sure that we're really keeping our energy high. Yeah. So there's three things that we focus on, mental, uh, physical, and emotional energies. Okay. So if we can work on those things, um, that those are cornerstones for us. Sweet. But, I mean, it's just really a, like it's a testament yeah. of just like, again, it's like understanding the person behind the coaching and person behind the business and stuff like that. It's just helpful to me to like, I like to pick out certain aspects of it and where I'm like, I can do that or I can, you know, I feel more confident about like, well, I'm doing certain things right. I know yeah. that it builds my confidence uh, knowing that, yeah, those important mornings, like, especially with my little guy, like, you know, he, it's kind of funny. We bring this up uh, to ourselves a lot. It's like, he's, he helps us with literally everything. Like he wants to help mom mm -hmm. and me make coffee. And like, that's his morning, like one of his morning routines is like, I help make you coffee now. And I'm like, sure, buddy, let's, let's make it. And he'll go on his little stool and like put the K cups in and then close it, push the button and things like that. And I, yeah. I wouldn't take that away from him because, you know, there, there's just something about it where it's like the development of motor skills, the communication of, um, you know, breakdown of like, you know, doing things step by step. Uh, just again, just like those overall skill sets where it's just like, I really want him to continue to love and, and thrive in those moments where it's like, I get it. I know I have to do this before I do this and, mm -hmm. and, and just want to build his character that way. And yeah. Yeah. So, um, as we reach towards, you know, the ends of our conversation, a lot of the times I like to look towards the future mm -hmm. and kind of, again, just high goals. Maybe one of our listeners will be able to, to join you in your services and, and just kind of understand what you're trying to achieve yourself. I mean, I know that you probably always regenerate every year of like something new that you want to achieve, but if yeah. there's something this year that we can help you out with, uh, I want to be able to put it down on in the, in the, pod universe and hopefully we can make it happen for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, a big piece for us is, is impact. And so mm -hmm. one of our missions is to create 5 billion in enterprise value oh, wow. uh, yeah. for companies. So uh, with the existing companies that we have, their valuations plus um, the, the increased valuation that's getting created by the work that we're doing, mm -hmm. that's how we know that we're, we're purposely moving forward. Yeah. Another key piece of this is about around light capitalism Okay. And so the idea of um, capitalism, I think, has a negative connotation to it. Our focus on capitalism is really on the light side, which is how do we elevate the community? How do we elevate people? Yeah. Uh, we want our customers, our clients to make a lot of money. Yeah. And um, there's no shame in that. It's just how you show up with that money, what you do with it mm -hmm. is the other side of the coin. Yeah. And so if they're able to empower their employees, pay them a good wage, um, build new, you know, structures and systems that really uh, elevate, you know, the employees and their families, as well as the clients and the vendors and everybody in the ecosystem. Yeah. And if they sell the company, what do they plan to do after that? Yeah. You know, use the money for good. Um, we'll help you make a lot. We also want you to to find ways to give back. And yeah. I think that's where we we find more purpose and intent in the uh, the impact that we're after. Yeah, I think that's yeah. really important. I mean, from the standpoint of where I, where I am, um, I try my best to give back to my own tribe and and do what I can. But the the real impact comes from like, like again, what what you bring to the community, and I think that's really really important. That again, I think the real root of where you're coming from is that culture aspect of like wanting the best from that seedling. And that way it grows into a bigger, stronger tree. And yeah. um, so it means a lot that you were able to be here today. And so to share those kind of wisdoms for everyone listening, uh, you brought up something about giving back. And I really want to catch you before you go uh, uh, and start promoting what your business uh, and saying goodbye. Um, the Sons of Arizona yeah. is one uh, particular uh, nonprofit that you like to help out and participate in. Can you give us a little insight on that and share a little bit? Yeah, there's there's two charities uh, that I was part of and co-founded. One is Sons of Arizona and the second is uh, Valley Guardians. Okay. And, um, you know, they, they both have uh, raised a lot of money. Valley Guardians, I think, raised almost a million dollars this wow. um, just this year. 
And that's a significant amount of money that goes directly to kids. Nice. And so those um, those dollars, there's no admin fees. 100% of it goes directly to the source. Yeah. Um, and so that's very rare that you'd find an organization that's able to give back 100% of proceeds. That's awesome. Um, so uh, Sons of Arizona also, I think, uh, does the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, both these organizations focus primarily locally. Uh, but really elevating community through uh, making sure that uh, they're both focused around kids, making yeah. sure that the kids get, you know, resources that they need in order to um, to go to college or even go to a private high school or even have clothes or be able to afford books or some, you know, continued education. Awesome. Um, so both of those are really great resources to donate to. Yeah, that's really great. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate every bit of your time. I know you're a busy man, but before you go, give us a little bit of where everyone can find you online, social media. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I really like your Instagram. It's, oh, it's one you. of those great ones where it's like a combination of what you believe in, uh, what you're trying to achieve, and also a little bit of the family side. And mm -hmm. uh, hopefully I can catch you on a Let's Dance competition later. Uh, <laughs> I saw I saw that video yeah. of you and your daughter and I was like, I think I think this is a cool guy and this is a fun thing. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she is the reigning champ by far. I happen to get her one time and I may never play again. Just so I can I can <laughs> hold, hold that over that whole yeah. title, yeah. Uh, the best way to reach us is through our website, culturetocash.com, or you can find me on Instagram. That's probably the best place at, at Matt Blanton. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. And before you guys go, you can hear every episode of our podcast at FindingArizonaPodcast.com. Make it easy for you guys to connect with us through social media under Finding Arizona Podcast. And last but not least, we always end every conversation with a kisses, hugs, and belly rubs to our four-legged friends. And we will see you next time. Bye.